Hey all, Scott here from Art of the Genre, and today we're going to take a look at the town section of the classic 1980 uh, adventure from TSR, that is T1, The Village of Hamlet. We're going to take a look at this one today. Uh, it is a classic. It was written by uh, Gary Gygax himself, and it was done after uh, various campaigns that he ran uh, for this system. So um, it's... It's really, really good. One of the things that you look at um, that I think you just need to take some time with um, with this adventure is the intro. Um, so I'm actually going to uh, put up a little screen here. We'll take a look at this. Uh, the adventure takes place um, there in the Cron Hills, which is right in the middle. But I'm going to read the, the intro to this because I think it's very, very important that you actually hear it. Um, the Village of Hamlet. Hamlet, as it is commonly called, is situated in the central part of Flannis, that portion of the eastern uh, Auric continent which is known and civilized. The village, actually hamlet-sized, the local uh, parlance uh, distinguishes it with the term village, is located some ten or so leagues southwest, southeast of the town of Verbonbach. On the fringe of the territory controlled by the noble lord, the Viscount of Verbonbach, it is at a crossroads. To the north is the mighty Velvediva River. Along those south banks runs uh, the, the Lorewood. Many days travel to the east on the shores of the Lake of the Unknown Depths, the Nyer Dive, is the great walled city of divers. The village of Sabinwich is halfway along the route and below that to the southeast and the east are miles and miles of forest the gnarly and beyond which is the wild coast the woolly bay and the sea of garanant the road south forks uh, a league or so beyond the little community one meandering towards the wild coast and the other rolling through the lower cron hills to the village of osterwerk and then eventually turning southwards again to the elven kingdom of Selene. The western route leads into the very heart of the Gnomish Highlands, passing through the Greenway Valley, about a day's travel distance, going onwards to the Lort Mill Mountains and far beyond. Okay, so that is the setting that you're talking about here. And it shows that Gygax himself knows an awful lot about what he's talking about with his own world, that being Greyhawk. Um, you can see below the Cron Hills here is Selene. That's an elven kingdom. You've got the Gnarly uh, to the east uh, forest where you get a lot of Druidic influences in this module. Uh, to the north there is Verbonbach. Uh, that is the city that kind of controls uh, the village of Hamla in those areas. And then one of my favorite places on the other side of the gnarly is the wild coast you've got valuna um, anyway it's right at the very heart of the continent and it's a perfect place to set this module um, and if that doesn't make you think i've got to take up my sword uh, you know and you know see go go on adventure here then certainly um this particular cover by artist Jeff D from 1980 will make you do so. Uh, probably one of the more evocative pieces um, in old TSR lore, this attack of the zombies. Um, the shredded, absolutely shredded halfling with his cloak that some people thought were a, maybe a shield, but it actually whips around there at the side, so it's actually his cloak. He's ready to attack two-handed with that short sword of his, or will he get grabbed? Uh, I mean, it, there's just so many things that are going on in this, and this actually takes takes place in the latter part of the adventure you can get the zombie attack but anyway it's it's uh, one of my personal favorite pieces I think it's probably the best piece that Jeff ever did um, for TSR in those early days um, but nonetheless uh, that is what you're what you're going to get within um, this adventure itself. Um, this is the village of Hamlet, uh, which you can see here. This is going to be a map that's on the interior. It's two pages, and it shows you basically um, what is in the village. Um, and you know, once you take a look at that, you can see that this is a map that you can find online with just hundreds and hundreds of different <laughs> versions, probably of it. Here's a here's a great one where somebody did color and put uh, you know uh, uh, words along it which tells you what everything is um, right on the map itself but nevertheless this is the one that you're going to basically get within the course of the module and one of the things that you've got to understand when you're looking at village 
is that it is just the, the inkling, it's just the start of a huge campaign that being um, ending within the Temple of Elemental Evil. Um, so that said, um, there's a lot to be had here. And I think if you read through the descriptions, because there's two full pages that Gygax put into the beginning of this. And again, this is only a 16 page module. So it's very, very small, but it's just packed with these small words um, that Gygax put in kind of lovingly when he talks about how to start the adventure, what the characters are like. He likes to keep them poor. Uh, they're on like, uh, you know, basic steeds and with just a couple coins in their purses and basically the stuff that they have on their back. They've been sent from Verbanbach um, or coming up from the Wild Coast uh, to investigate some of the things that have been happening here with bandits within the course of, course of the town and the village. He gives a great history which talks about the fall of the Temple of Elemental Evil, the founding of the village of Hamlet, uh, Nolb, which is a town that's just, I think, six leagues uh, to the north uh, east um, where the the temple of elemental evil is um, but he lovingly takes 10 pages of a 16 page module to just talk about what is in this village he goes um, building by building for a lot of it um, and he will take you through various descriptions um, from you know the inn of the welcome wench which he gives you a full list of the costs of beer and all the stuff that they have in there with I think a lot of people like uh, the traders establishment the church of St. Cuthbert and the guard tower um, which are some of the primary large areas within within the village and then you can fill it up with other things but there are a lot of other NPCs that are in the village as well. Um, and he gives them personalities. And a lot like if you've uh, ever seen my review of Against the Cult of the Reptile God, um, you will see as well within the course of the village that everyone has kind of an alignment um, or, or I should say a faction that they're aligned with. So there are a lot of druidic uh, worshiping people in the uh, village of Hamlet. There's some St. Cuthbert people. And then, of course, there are agents um, of evil that are going to be uh, in the town, too, that will report back at least to the moat house and maybe to the Temple of Elemental Evil if you put that kind of stuff in as well. So, if there are 10 pages of a 16-page module, what I do with Village of Hamlet, especially since he is, he's, uh, Gygax says specifically, start the characters at first level here. Don't bring them in with any experience. Start them at first. Well, if they start at first, they're going to have to get experience here. Um, and the best way to do that is to interact with the town and kind of make the Village of Hamlet your home. Um, for these adventures, find a place to stay. The the end of the welcome winch. Every room is detailed in there. Uh, there are maps for all these things. So get yourself a room. Start to investigate. Talk to people in the village. Find people that might be able to teach you things, and allow the party to really become familiar with the area. Um, you can go, you know, to the north, um, and you can go along the river here. You can go visit the knoll up above. Um, you can you can. Even even go and check out the gnarly forest. Um, there's so many things that are available here to get yourself a little bit of experience and begin to start a, a kind of get inklings of what the tel Temple of Elemental Evil is and also the Moat House, which is the second part of this adventure, which takes up five pages and I'll go into on, on another video. But for this base video, I just wanted to talk about the village because it's really the onus of this adventure. Um, some of the things that I've done within the course of this adventure, I've had a, a, sh a shaman slash druid um, who brings rain onto the village and starts flooding out the lowlands and then unleashes a horde of um, giant frogs on the village that each you know, want to eat villagers or flocks of sheep or stuff like that. Um, that's a fun thing that you can kind of uh, invest the characters in um, to help the village and become kind of named within the course of the village, but not super dangerous, but everyone likes fighting huge toads, right? Or huge frogs. Um, and then you can also align them uh, with druid powers um, in the area or with St. Cuthbert, depending on what the party is, and have kind of factions going against each other. The Druids don't like the St. Cuthbert people because they think they're too civilized or they're just money grubbing uh, and just want to get uh, coins out of people. Uh, where, of course, the St. 
cutthroat people think the druids are just backwater heathens who you know sacrifice uh you know people in the woods and stuff like that so you can have a conflict going on there even amongst the party um and then eventually when a threat comes like from the moat house or the bandits everyone has to band together and go take that out anyway um and that'll kind of fall to the wayside another thing that i've looked at within this adventure because gygax deals uh, he, he goes into so much detail about the houses and the people within there's a lot of treasure um, within these houses um, and because of that fact um, you could make a great adventure where if you have a couple thieves um, they could actually try to start up a thieving guild or start robbing from the city um, and maybe in that fashion they run afoul of the bandits who don't like them taking money that they think are coming from uh, that should be going to them or temple agents from the temple of elemental evil don't like to see independent thieves working um but it gives you a good opportunity to go in and break into some houses get some gold get some treasure there's a lot of like silver goblets and stuff like that but it's worth a lot of money um and if you're playing obviously in AD&D, uh you know you can get uh experience for that uh treasure as well uh and then last but not least uh in this there is the guard tower um, which has um, uh, Brune and Rufus. Uh, you'll see them on the back of the adventure done by Jeff, Jeff D as well, but they're a wizard and a fighter, and they're really kind of, um, well, for no better sense of the word, they're kind of dicks, and they, they want to take your money, or at least percentages of adventure's money if they go out and they do anything. So you can have a conflict directly with them um, with, within this as well, which could be a lot of fun because they were sent uh, from Verbonbach, the, the Rufus, the fighter, is just looking to pick up some extra experience before you can go back and like get a title. So these guys are very entitled. The magic user is young, and uh, anyway, they just want to kind of get your money, and they won't help you with anything. Like if you can say like, oh, "Look, there are frogs out there," they'd be like, "Oh, go take care of it. It's not really our problem." When it really is their problem, but they're not going to do it. So they're kind of a great foil characters to have in here as well, and they're they're connected with everybody in the town, so they can make threats. Like you know, I'll tell the mayor or whatever else. Um, so. So they're kind of fun to have around as well. Again, not evil. They're actually awful good, but they can be on that side of justice where they think that they're always in the right and you're always in the wrong or you're trash, that kind of stuff. So there's a lot to go on here in Village. Um, and again, Gygax uh, did two thirds of this module is just about the village itself. So unless you start coming up with adventures, like I've said, um, just little things, uh, you know, a hag that could be in those marshes to the north. Um, there's, there's talk uh, where somebody had slayed a troll years ago. Maybe another one has come back into its uh, den, which could be uh, 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 across the river there um, to the west. Um, so there's just a lot to be had, but you're going to have to go into this module with a thought process of making the village of Hama your base of operations and then getting some experience. And then maybe by the time you're third level, you're really in a much better place to go out to the moat house, um, which is the last third of this adventure, which we'll go into on the next video and actually from that point um, then take on the threats there because they're they're pretty significant um, for you know various uh, uh, level uh, carry uh, uh, characters as well. And one last thing I'll show you before I get out here as well is the uh, very famous uh, uh, moat house itself. These are the things that should be going at. Um, and this is done by David, uh, uh, Dave Trampier. So I just wanted to show you this as well, since this is art of the genre. This is a great interior cover piece done by him, um, which shows you some of the threats that you'll have at the moat house. But again, that's only one third of this module. So keep that in mind if you're running um, Hamlet, that really the onus of it uh, through Gygax is just to establish a base, get your characters some experience and have some fun and let them feel like Hamlet itself isn't just a place that they pass through to get to a dungeon, but it's kind of their hometown by the end of this or some place that people may have adopted them by giving them pies for their help. Um, there, you know, there's a, there's a woman here who's like... Um, uh, uh, you know, somebody that the, the old maid of the village, even though she's young, uh, because she's kind of nasty, but maybe you can uh, have somebody who gets involved with her and finds out that she's not as nasty as people think she is. Um, you know, that there's reasons behind that. There's just a lot of depth that you can put in this module. So keep that in mind, DMs. And that is my notes for the first part of Village of Hamlet. And uh, otherwise, um, you know, as I always tell, tell everyone here, uh, great gaming and we'll see you next time.